If somebody offered you $20,000 in cash or the same amount but in gold coins, which would you accept? What if the same deal was made to you 20 years ago? If you'd kept that cash sitting in a safe, today that same money would be worth around $13,000, almost half the amount in purchasing power. But if you'd accepted the gold coins and cashed that in today, you'd be getting $100,000 of cash. So a couple of years ago, I did a video on gold investing. It was in February 2020, and it was right before we really understood what COVID-19 was all about. So needless to say, that video became outdated pretty quickly. And even in the last few weeks, a lot has changed. Gold is once more back in the spotlight. So today I'm setting about to create the ultimate gold video updated for these crazy times. I'm gonna take you through the different ways to invest in it, the pros and cons, and I'm finally gonna to get to the bottom of whether or not it makes sense to invest in it. All right, let's get to the video. Okay, back to the basics. What is this rock that we call gold and why is it so valuable? As you know, gold is one of the oldest forms of currencies. In fact, we've been using it to pay for stuff since at least 800 BC. These days we use paper money or fiat, but gold is still a popular way to store your wealth. That's because over time, as inflation pushes prices up and your cash becomes less valuable, gold has traditionally stood the test of time. It's done pretty well against inflation. So it makes sense that with inflation at record levels and a recession on the cards, everyone seems to be turning to gold these days. Gold prices are through the roof. That's because when there's heightened uncertainty and currencies seem like they might be failing us, gold has traditionally been a currency that we've fallen back on. It's generally considered the safer option. So why gold and why not, say, bronze? Good question. So realistically, gold doesn't really have an intrinsic value outside of being worn as jewelry or decorating furniture. It doesn't degrade, and honestly, because it's really pretty to look at. It has this air of mystery about it that we humans just seem to find very compelling the world over. Okay, so how do you invest in it? Well, there are three main ways that you can invest in gold. You can buy physical gold, you can invest in gold stocks or ETFs, or you can trade gold via the futures or derivatives market. All right, let's start with physical gold. Buying physical gold means that you're actually buying a lump of metal that you can hold in your hand. This is called bullion. Typically, if you're investing in bullion, you're buying gold bars that are 99.5% pure. But you could also buy gold in the form of jewelry or gold coins. But of course, you're going to get the best price if you invest in gold bars. So where do you buy gold? Okay, so you buy gold through a bullion dealer. Many of these bullion dealers are also refineries. And you can do this by physically walking into a bullion dealer, paying them cash and walking out with gold in your hand. Or you could order the gold online or over the phone and have the gold shipped to you or stored on site. And storing on site is a good option if you trust the dealer because bullion dealers typically have very high security vaults and they'll be able to offer more security than what you could in your own home but they do normally charge a storage fee for the service, so it pays to check what that is first. And then there might also be insurance fees. If you're not super keen on walking into a bullion dealership, there are now gold buying apps that you can sign up to on your phone. It is worth noting though, that if you're buying gold on one of these apps, typically you're buying what's called unallocated gold. This is where your purchase is backed by physical gold, but rather than buying a specific lump of gold, you're investing in a pool of gold. So while the value of your investment will go up and down along with the price of gold, you'll never actually be able to physically hold that gold in your hand. But when you convert that back into cash, of course you see basically the same benefits. Before I go on, if you're finding this video useful, please hit the like button and go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. So how do you choose which dealer to go with? One thing I missed in my last video is how you choose which bullion dealer or which refinery you should be buying gold from, which ones you can trust. Especially if you're purchasing online, this is really important. You don't want to end up with fake gold or no gold at all. First, as always, it pays to do a check online, just do a basic Google search, see if there's any reviews out there for this website, see if there are any product reviews for this company. Also check what the costs are because they differ from uh, dealer to dealer. Check whether it's regulated by an authority in your country. Also check if it has accreditation. Probably the most important accreditation you can get is from the London Bullion Market Association. And then there's also a list of others, which you can see on the screen. 
This accreditation tells you that the gold is high quality and that it has been sourced meeting certain ethical guidelines. For instance, to be a member of the LBMA, refineries must meet certain humanitarian and environmental criteria. Unfortunately, ethically sourced gold is pretty hard to come by. Gold mining is notoriously bad for the environment and it is also notorious for breaches against human rights. If ethically sourced gold is really important to you, check where the refinery is sourcing its gold from and whether those refineries are members of the Swiss Better Gold Association or in the Fair Mines or Fair Trades program. Okay, so moving away from physical gold, the other way to invest in gold is via stocks or ETFs. And when I say gold stocks, I mean stocks and companies that are in the gold industry. Typically these are gold miners. So different countries have their own set of gold stocks, but some of the biggest in the world include Newmont, Barrett Gold, Franco Nevada, Goldfields, and Anglo Gold Ashanti. Now these companies are really massive, so you'll often find that they're listed on multiple exchanges. For instance, the Anglo Gold Ashanti is listed on the New York Stock Exchange, the Australian Stock Exchange, the Brussels and Paris Stock Exchange, and also the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Of course, investing in gold stocks is very different to investing in physical gold. Stocks in gold companies do tend to see their prices rise along with the price of gold, but being companies run by people like you or I, there are so many other factors that can impact the stock price. This includes a company merger, discoveries of new gold fields, or a company scandal, which is not uncommon in mining companies. Also, just remember the smaller the company, usually the riskier the stock. Small mining companies collapse, I'd say, almost as much as they IPO. Your safer option here is to invest in a gold ETF. And there are really two types of gold ETFs out there. There are ETFs that hold gold mining companies or companies within the gold sector. And then there are ETFs that simply track the price of gold using futures contracts. When you invest in a gold futures price ETF, then the value of your investment will typically be in line with the actual price of gold. That being said, it does so using futures contracts, so it's never going to be exact. And gold ETFs are also different on every exchange, but you can see a list on the screen of some of the best performing gold ETFs in the US. If you want to learn more about ETFs, I have another video on that, so I've left a link in the description below. If you're more of a hardcore trader, you can trade gold through the futures market. This is less about having a long-term investment in gold and more about making a profit from short-term price fluctuations. Now futures trading is typically something that institutional or professional investors are involved in. Although these days there are a lot of platforms and trading apps that allow everyday people to uh, trade futures as well. A lot of these trading apps, depending on what country you're in, actually use contracts for difference. These are a type of derivatives contract. With CFDs, you're not actually trading the underlying asset, so you'll never actually own the gold. You'll never be trading any gold. Instead, you're betting on the price movements of gold. The benefit of CFDs or futures trading in general is that they allow you to make a lot of trades really quickly. And more importantly, they let you use leverage to do so. So that is borrowed funds. That means you can lose a lot of money really quickly or you could gain a lot of money really quickly. Some popular apps or platforms that allow you to trade gold futures include uh, eToro, IG, CMC Markets, Interactive Brokers, Plus500, Charles Schwab. There are so many out there. Okay, so next up, we're going to talk about whether or not gold actually is a good investment. So if you're enjoying this video, please stick around to the end where I'm going to look at what history tells us about gold prices. Plus, I'll reveal whether or not I've invested in gold. Okay, so why invest in gold? I'm going to start with the pros. Number one, to make money from it. <laughs> That's why you invest in anything these days is to make a profit. When gold prices go up, the value of your investment in gold also goes up. And we've definitely seen the price of gold skyrocket over the last few years, even the last few weeks. It's considered to be a relatively safe investment and it's beaten inflation historically, so it can be a good option instead of cash. It's also a good hedge against risk when the economy starts to underperform or when people start to worry about the future, gold prices tend to go up, even as the stock market starts to go down. Plus, unlike other assets, for instance, like property, it's really easy to convert your gold back into cash. So in other words, it's a liquid asset. Plus, it can also be a really good gift. 
Okay, so what are some of the cons to investing in gold? While gold is sometimes considered to be a relatively safer option for your money, it's definitely not without risk. In fact, gold prices more recently have been really volatile. So if you've only got a short period of time to invest in gold before you need to withdraw your money back into cash, there's a good chance you could see the value of your investment go down, especially if gold prices unexpectedly crash. The other thing is, since it is considered a lower-ish risk investment, then your returns are going to be lower-ish as well. Well, lower compared to a higher risk sort of investment. Like if you'd invested in a crazy penny stock or something, that's high risk, high reward. And the same goes for gold. There are also the costs to think about, especially the ongoing costs, like the storage costs if you're keeping your gold locked in a vault, and then the insurance costs. At the same time, your gold isn't bringing you in any extra income, like if you'd invested into dividend stocks, you're only going to get your income once you sell your gold at the end. If you're investing in gold in the stock market, remember you're not actually investing in gold, you're investing in gold stocks, which are just companies that are related to gold. So that comes with the same kinds of risks that you'd get investing in any type of company. Okay, so good investment, yay or nay? Well, it's interesting to look at how gold has performed over different periods of time. A lot of people compare today to the 1970s stagflation period, which is where inflation was heading up really quickly, oil prices were at record highs, but wages were starting to drop. In just a decade between 1970 to 1980, the price of gold rose a staggering 2000%, far exceeding the returns from the stock market. That being said, in the comparatively calmer period after that, gold prices were pretty flat for over a decade. It wasn't really until around 2005 where gold prices started to head up again. And then of course, we saw them hit a new record during COVID-19. There's a clear correlation between the price of gold and economic worry. And we're seeing prices take off once again. And with everything going on in the world, it's not hard to understand why. Okay, but back to the question, should you invest in it? Well, unfortunately, that totally depends on your personal circumstances. But if you have enough money saved up outside of your emergency buffer, then gold has historically been a good place to put your money over a long time frame. If you're looking at a period of 30 to 40 years, then it's actually beaten the stock market. It's beaten the S&P 500. Of course, that totally depends on when you were investing in it. Between 1985 to 2005, gold had very little traction. In fact, it actually dipped for a period of time. I have invested a little bit of gold personally. These days, I kind of wish I'd invested in more. And I invested in gold through a gold trading app. I do think it's seriously worth considering as part of a diversified investment portfolio. Well, as for buying up more, while I've seen prices head upwards really quickly, they're getting pretty hot. I'll be waiting for a bit more of a dip before I'm buying in. It's also worth mentioning that some people view Bitcoin as an alternative to gold. Not everyone agrees on this, but the reason they think this is because Bitcoin, just like gold, is finite and they both need to be mined in a totally different sense. And they're both alternative currencies. In other words, another place to put your money outside of cash. I've also invested in some Bitcoin and some other cryptocurrencies. But I'd like to hear from you. Have you invested in gold? If so, how did you do it? If you haven't yet, do you plan to? I'd love to hear in the comments below. And as always, if you liked this video and you'd like to see more videos just like this, please do me a favor and hit the like and subscribe button. Thanks so much for watching.